on December 1, 1955, Rosa Parks, a seamstress, and an NAACP officer took a seat in the front row of the colored section of a Montgomery bus. As the bus filled up, the driver ordered Parks and the three other African-American passengers to empty the row they were occupying so that a white man could sit down without having to sit next to any African-Americans. Parks refused to move. As she stared out the window, the bus driver said, If you don't stand up, I'm going to call the police and have you arrested. The soft-spoken Parks replied, You may do that. The news of Parks' arrest spread rapidly. Joanne Robinson and NAACP leader E.D. Nixon suggested a bus boycott. The leaders of the African American community, including many ministers, formed the Montgomery Improvement Association to organize the boycott. They elected the pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, 26-year-old Martin Luther King Jr., to lead the group. An ordained minister since 1948, King had just earned a Ph.D. degree in theology from Boston University. Well, I'm not sure I'm the best person for the position, King confided to Nixon, but if no one else is going to serve, I'd be glad to give it a try. The Montgomery bus boycott sparked rebellious African Americans all over Montgomery, Alabama. Soon the African Americans united as a single defined group. The African Americans for one thing pledged to no longer ride the buses in town, so they organized marches, walks, and even carpools to help out their segregated community. This revolt incited the court case of Browder v. Gale. After December 20th, 1956, the U.S. Supreme Court declared Alabama and Montgomery bus laws to be unconstitutional.